Good morning. It is 10 o'clock where I live, so we're going to start Unhindered by Coding, episode 58. Who'd have thought? Um, so we are going to continue again today with the challenge of, challenge? The process, I think would be a better term. The process of uh, generalizing our individual to use traits um, instead of just a raw struct. Um, we had started that on Saturday. Maxim made a lot of progress on it. Um, and now I think the uh, task for the day is to take that idea and apply it in our selectors. Um, so we have a lot of selectors that are using the specific struct e, uh, EC individual, um, but which I think can now use the individual trait. And so that is the main thing we're going to do today is try to convert those to use the individual trait. Um, so let's see, let's make, oops, ah, wrong thing, you go away. Um, and let's look at the code. So one thing I did offline um, since uh, Saturday is... It used to be that the selectors were all in one great big file. <clears throat> there was a selectors.rs that had the trait and the implementation of all the different selectors in it. Um, and it was a really big piece. And so I, um, I think made it more rusty <clears throat> uh, by actually creating a selectors folder, putting the uh, trait definition. So my sense is that what people do is they put the type definitions, so traits, enums, structs, in mod.rs, and then they put most of the impl well, hello, is it too? Um, put most of the implementation stuff, uh, especially if there are multiple implementations of a trait, in separate rs files. And folks should tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but I think that seems to be what people do. Um, so I offline moved everything. So the selector is the only thing now in this mod.rs. So that's the definition of the selector trait. And then I put each of the individual kinds of selectors like random um, in their own .rs file. Um, and I had to change a bunch of use statements um, to go to the right place after I did that. But once all that was done, it wasn't, it wasn't hard. It was mildly tedious, but it wasn't, it, there was nothing intellectually interesting that happened. Um, and so that's how we've now got it set up. Um, and I think it's nice. It means that, um, um, related things, it's easier to see that, oh, these are the pieces that are related to tournament, um, the, the pieces that are related to weighted selectors, um, and uh, we've got less uh, clutter. Also, and I didn't get to this, but it had been my goal, and I'll try to get to it later. Probably won't bother doing it online today, but uh, I can now also provide some tests for each of these in their own file, uh, and instead of having one really long file, it's now some big interleaved mess of definitions and tests. <clears throat> we can have the weighted uh, selector definition and then test for weighted selector, and it doesn't interfere with any of the other selectors. So that seems to be a good thing. So I did that. Um, now that the the reason I was focusing on selectors here is where we had left off on Saturday is. We had created, let's see, go to, to oops, individual. Ah. We had created an individual trait, um, and it has one implementation at the moment, the EC individual. Um, and at the moment, the selectors are all structured to work around EC individuals. But there's really nothing special about EC individuals for almost all, if not all, of the uh, implementations of the trait. Things like random 
really don't care what this is. Um, I mean, we're just choosing out of an iterator, out of the population. So the population could be any collection that is iterable um, and we can choose a random thing from it. So the fact that it's a collection of EC individuals is completely irrelevant. In fact, the fact that it's a VECPOP is f more specific than strictly necessary. We really would, we could get away with anything that supports iter, um, which is in fact a lot of things. Um, I'm not going to go down that road immediately, but uh, it certainly seems like we don't want to be tied to EC individual everywhere. Be nice if this was in fact just individual. Um, so it'd be nice to just change the selector to be uh, instead of a vec pop of EC individuals uh, returning an EC individual to make it a vec pop of I, um, where maybe in certain circumstances I will need to implement various things, but uh, in a case like random, it doesn't even need to implement anything. It's just some, you know, basic type I, and we don't really care. So, um, so that's where we're headed. Now, one thing I did just, I was poking at kind of as just the momentum was going from doing this work, um, offline. And one thing I did was I tried, uh, uh, let's uh, pop that stash. Um, I tried creating a selector I trait. So this was similar. Um, the other day, um, we were going from EC, oh no, VecPop um, population that had G and R as uh, generic arguments like selector does. And we were switching to have having just um, a single generic I. Um, and we had done a neat thing where we had um, created a, a new selector with a new name. And I was trying to like make this as incremental as I could so that everything would compile and run at every step. Um, so instead of just trying to like replace the old selector with the new selector, I was like, well, let's make a new selector that's the kind of thing we want. So it takes, uh, is generic over some type I, and now we have a vec pop of I, and we return a reference to an I. Um, and then, again, following the idea from before, um, the idea was to say that, well, we have the trait GR, um, and it needs to be selector I of EC individual GR. Um, and then this would allow us to continue to use this everywhere until we get it replaced. Um, and that seemed like that could be kind of nifty, but it doesn't work. Um, so let's see, yeah, um, everything blows up. And the problem is, um, no, you don't blow up. You should, yeah. Weird. Why do you not blow up? Huh. So, what you get most places is that um, trait bound. Oh, now hang on. Oh, right. I've got to also say, oh, I've actually, I've done this here. So I implements individual and that worked. Um, oh, cause I've actually converted over to selector I and here I'm using selector G and R and this, uh, what was the prop? This is actually, this is different than I was remembering before. So, um, trait bound lex case selector. Oh, let's not, not look at a complicated one. Let's look at a simple one. Trait bound best selector, not satisfied. Trait selector I is implemented for random. Well, this seems to like actually 
be doing what I thought it was going to do, but it's not blowing up in the way that I had remembered it. I would remembered there being some sort of error. Oh, no, 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 no. I remember I tried doing a type. So if I did, obviously I did a couple of different things here. So I tried doing type selector gr equals selector i e c individual gr and that and if we comment all that that did not work and that was actually what we'd done well hello now it seems to but i swore this blew up um and that the oops i don't want left case go away left case go 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 be gone um that oh yeah so this was the thing that i got i expected a trait but found a type alias selector so that didn't work because apparently you can't use a type alias in place of a, a trait and i was like oh sad because i kind of liked that idea um uh so that can't be the way we do it but this approach seems to be potentially workable that um we'll say that a trait selector gr is just a sub trait i'm not sure what the right rust language is um uh of selector i on an ec individual um, so anywhere we were using this we will just get that and now i think there's going to have to be a lot of things that change and it looks like i did this for random um and uh no actually i, I switched all the way over to selector i so why does this not work Trade bound best selector I is not satisfied. The trait selector I is implemented for random. Da, 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 da. Oh, because the types are all. Um, so this should be. Well. actually um let me split down so selector gr provides selector i which means that we have a select that takes a vec pop of EC individual and returns an EC individual. That feels like, oh, you have to implement both traits. So I'd have to implement, oh, I see, I see. I'd have to implement one that takes an I to make this part. I'd have to implement a select. Oh, so this would actually be selector. I'd have to implement selector I EC individual I or EC individual GR. And oh, so maybe is that all that I need to do? Let's just change this to so that it knows which trait I'm actually hey, implementing. And then it doesn't know what that is and it needs to be imported. Bingo. Okay. So it was really, quote unquote, just a matter of um, uh, getting the, making it sure it knew which trait we were talking about. So then I guess the question is, is this worth doing? So yeah, I would have to do the um, 
impl gr selector uh, gr and oh four um, four best. And oh, fine. So, is that actually worth doing? Um, so, let's see. You can implement it for any trait type T, but you might as well update the existing trait. Um, So you're saying, are you saying this could be T? Um, because I think we're going to need, if we're going to implement, oh yeah, so I really should be able to take pretty much anything. So, and it's only when we implement selector that we actually need G and R. Um, and I get, oops, no, I want to, it was in best. I guess the thing that I'm, yeah, I guess this is still worth doing because this will, no, because this won't compile. Everything else fails. So it's not like I'm really getting buying myself any kind of incremental change because I'm going to have to fix every selector. And if I'm going to have to fix every selector, there's not much value in keeping both selector I and selector. Unless, I guess it means that things that use selector will still work. So there is that value. Anybody that's using a selector will still be able to use the old selector GR. And once we get all this done, then we'll need to look for people that are using selector GR. Um, and then we can get rid of them. So having them both probably makes sense. Um, and so you're suggesting TGR selector for T, where T is a selector I. Oh. And you're saying that would be back here, I think, right? So you're saying impl tgr selector gr for t, where t is selector i ec individual gr so we have this sort of genericized implementation um, and then we won't need this for all the other pieces is that so let's see what was the fuss here Um, so you have selectors, selector for best. So this conflicts with best because best could go in here. So this definite, this implementation here, uh, goes away. And yeah, 
Uh, okay, now <coughs> interesting. So then that doesn't have to be there. And this is exactly what we had before. We've just changed this to be selector I. Um, and all the other things got better. Wow, that is really cool. Go you. Is it too? I totally wouldn't have that. I. So let me think about why. Why would I have? How would I have thought of that? So I know I want every one of my subtypes that implement selector I to also implement selector. And I could have gone through and added a line saying that to every one of them. I want this to implement selector after having also implemented selector I. But your cool idea says, oh, let's not repeat that everywhere. Let's do that once for type T. And if T implements selector I, then we'll say it also implements selector GR. And then we're good. Um, and we know that because it selects I, it implements selector I, it'll have this select function. And that's really all we need um, and anybody that uses selector GR, a selector GR, that'll now work because they're under the covers also <coughs> getting a selector I and that provides the select method they need. Oh, that is very nice. That is really very nice. I like that a lot. So then, um, and actually I don't even think of it I can see how it could feel slightly cyclic, but I don't really think of it as cyclic. I mean, I feel like we're, I mean, I think that, I think actually, I take that back. I think that the reason it wouldn't have occurred to me to try it is in some sense is there's part of my brain that does feel like it's cyclic. But in fact, actually, I don't think it's cyclic. I mean, I think that this is just saying, if you've got this, then, hey, you've already got that, which is really the whole point of this trait definition, is saying that if you have this, let's say you also have that, because um, we're basically kind of uh, wrapping, it's not quite wrapping, but you know, we're, we're saying that if you have this, then you also have this, and this is just saying that for any type T, that has a selector I, it also has selector, um, which seems totally reasonable. And that's pretty nifty. And we don't have to do anything here. I mean, that's also kind of, um, uh, we don't need anything here because selector I specifies the necessary select method. Um, and then ultimately all of this will go away. This will get renamed to just be selector and life will be swell and zippy. Um, so now some of these are not happy. Let's go, let's, uh, let's do tournament first. So why is tournament not happy? Um, But I thought this was all compiling a second ago. Um, oh, I I still need to change this to be an I, right? Um, and I probably need to implement, import it. And that needs to be an I. And then we'll have to change the various places here that needs to be an I. Um, this needs to be an I.
And this needs to be an... Uh, can we just get away with the eye here? Do we even need individual? I don't know. Um, we don't! That is pretty awesome. So, what in here... Where are we saying the individual that I implements ORD? Because we need ORD for this to work. And it's maybe it just hasn't figured it out yet because of the other compilation errors. But I feel like we're, we're missing an ORD here because this max won't work without uh, I being uh, ordinal. Um, so let's fix the other things because it's possible that, um, that just is, um, the problem, uh, the issue. So this is going to need to be I, uh, and then we have to import, oh, come on, stop it. Import selector I, and... We need I Oh, so actually this really ought to be selector I here. Boom boom ba -doom, ba -doom. That's gonna, and I guess we really just don't need G and R, right? So we ought to be able to just get rid of them. Replace them with I, and I, and somewhere there's gonna need to be some dependencies, but we'll get there when we get there. I, oops, uh, uh, I, and we don't want G and R anymore, and we don't want G and R anymore, I, and that gets us most everything, but there is, oh, right here. This should be I. It's like, what is GNR? I. It's a shame that there's not a a refactoring to modify the signature of a function. Um, in uh, a lot of the um, J J Java support systems, you can. Uh, there's a refactoring for modifying the signature of a function and it will just go find all the places that that gets used and modify them. And I feel like that would be possible in Rust and it would be kind of nice, but um, so that does that. And I guess we don't need EC individual anymore. That probably is dangling around in some of these other ones too actually oh selector we don't use that best selector oh actually we haven't really done either of these oh, we did this one but we didn't really do best did we so this is really should just be I. And I. And I. And we don't need this guy. Boo, boo, boo. boo. 
and tournament. Yeah, we don't need EC individual and tournament anymore, and we don't need selector. And weighted, and then Lex case is all that's left. So <coughs> this becomes selector I of type I and I. And we'll have to, I guess we can just change this to be selector I. And EC individual. Aha. So the fact that this requires test results, that's going to come up somewhere. Um, I think. I'm not sure exactly where, but we're going to run into that problem. That's going to require some spe specificity that we do not have at the moment. Uh. Individual defines an item test results. Perhaps you need to implement it. So that looks like we're going to have to have access to the test results function in individual, and we don't have that at the moment. So that's over here. And we do have test oh so we just need to say that i implements individual so this is the first place where we've had to specify that i actually does something however that did not no field results oh it's because it's no No field results. So test results is returning a reference to test results. And so test, oh, test results in individual doesn't actually say, oh, here we are. Yeah, this doesn't say anything about what kind of thing that is. It just says that it's there. And so we don't know anything about its properties. So saying I as an individual tells us that we have a test results, but it doesn't tell us anything about what properties that has. So we have to actually say that test results equals test results of R which I feel like one two, oh we got a missing a thing and then I have to add do I have to say R? So it's generic in I and R, where I and R are related in that way. Oh. Okay. And now we're going to need that R has to implement partial EQ. Okay, so actually we're going to want to have a where clause here because this is going to get out of control pretty fast. Um, R partial EQ and we probably need a partial ord, right? Yep. Uh, plus partial ord. Boy. And now it compiles. Woohoo! Now, I feel like this is long. So why don't we take all of this and say it goes here. 
Boom, 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 boom. boom. That's a comma. And that's an I. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. D3S7ROX. Sounds like ham radio call sign. Okay. So we're saying we're going to implement selector I for lexicase over two generics, I and R. We're, and actually, I guess we could... Might make more sense to put them in this order. Um, which then would probably make more sense to have them in that order there. R is partial eek and partial ord. So we can do ordering and equality tests on it. And I is an individual whose test results type. And we have individuals have a genome type and a test results type. And so here we're saying that the test results type uh, of that individual has to be our test results struct with uh, type R, where R is this partial eek and partial ord. And that allows us to know that we can ask for the test results of an individual. So saying that it is an individual, um, that I is individual allows us to call test results. And saying that R, uh, oh no, that the test results field is of struct test results, tells us that the dot results should work. And then the fact that R is partial or and partial eek allows us to do the greater than and the equality tests. Spiffy. I like that. That is very cool. <coughs> And now we've got some failures. Whoops, ah, no, no, not that. Over in some other places. And I think these are just the places where we need to know ordinality. So best is gonna require that individuals be ordinal in some way. And tournament's going to require that individuals be ordinal in some way. So we're gonna have this, I think, similar things here. Um, Uh, so I has to be ORD. Can I just do that? I can, actually. So as long as an individual is ordinal, I bet I can get away with this. And voila. Everything looks like it compiles. Woohoo! And that's kind of cool because now... Everybody outside of the selector space still thinks we just have selector GR and doesn't know about selector I yet. And that's kind of slick. And now I think um, that there's not any reference to the old selector in the selector space anymore. Let's see if that's true. Um, oh, an EC individual doesn't need to be there. Oh, and yeah, that's actually the other thing that we were trying to do is get rid of all the EC individual references in selector. So let's actually check that as well. So no reference to selector or EC individual there or there or there or there or there. Very cool. So now the only place in this module where we refer to EC individual is in this definition of selector and the goal will be to get rid of selector. <sighs> Very cool. Nice incremental change. Uh, and, it, and the change was localized to the selectors module and didn't bleed out into any of the other modules yet, which actually makes me super happy. Let's actually confirm that it runs, because that's always a 
useful smoke test. And then we'll commit. Hey! Okay. That is zippity doo -dah. Yeah, and all these changes are inside selectors. Nothing crept out. That is very cool. Um, and so all of this is converting from selector to selector I. Cool. Um, uh, selectors module to use new uh, selector I trait um, so this changes everything in the selectors module to use the new selector I trait that depends on just one generic I instead of the old GR dependency. This removes all references to EC individual in this module. Um, the selector trait, uh, so the goal now would be to remove all external references to the selector trait, um, i.e. references outside of the selectors module, um, ultimately renaming selector I to just selector. <coughs> um, and then I want to say something about that neat trick. Um, is it to Twitch um, suggested the nice um, technique in mod.rs of impling uh, selector gr for all types t that also impl selector i this uh, trivially allowed all our selectors best random etc to implement implement both uh, or implement the old selector trait as soon as we had them implementing the new selector I trait. Okay, zippity doo dah. Commit that puppy. Now, we could, so we're at a branching point here. We were looking for instances of EC individual to get rid of. Now we have two tasks. We have EC individuals to get rid of and selectors to get rid of. Um, I think I'm going to treat this kind of like a stack and put the selector task on top because if we can get rid of that then we get rid of this whole business and that gets rid of this EC individual so in some sense we can't 
fully solve the EC individual problem until we've solved the selector problem. So I'm going to push the selector problem on top and work on um, getting rid of references to selector and replacing them with references to selector I. Um, so let's see where we have references. Yeah, right. And we still have the child maker. Um, but I think the child maker, yeah, I think it's going to, it's tied up in the EC individual thing at the moment as well. So that's going to have to get dealt with. Um, so interesting. It only shows up in generation. Hmm. So there's, at the moment, there's only this one uh, space where this gets used. Ah, and here, and there's Childmaker again. zippity doo -da. Um And uh, yeah, it's tied up with EC Individual as well. So that's going to have to get dealt with. Um, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, is this just going to be, so there's this reference to selector, this reference to selector, and so there's that one, and that one. Oh, and so there's just those. Okay, so there's the import and these two references. It's just going to be as easy as saying, um, hello, Glad Rios. Um, so quick background, and then we'll see if it, we're, we get lucky and we just have to change the names. So this is a um, evolutionary computation system, a, a simple genetic algorithm implemented in Rust. And we implemented the basic thing over a period of... Um, 18 sessions or something? Well, I mean, I guess the initial implementation probably took like 10 sessions. Um, and we've been refactoring, um, and that's what we're working on right now, is taking structs um, uh, and turning them into traits, basically trying to generalize um, important components of the system because I would like then to implement a genetic programming system in the same framework. So instead of just evolving fix, fixed length bit strings, we can also evolve general purpose programs. Um, but a lot of the code in the initial pass was pretty closely tied to the bit string version of things, which was reasonable. I was just trying, I was A, learning Rust and B, uh, trying to get something to work. Um, but now that it works, we're doing this refactoring to make things more general. And so that's the main thing we're doing right now. And so we're converting, um, for example, this specific struct, which is just at the moment, well, it's actually a little more general than that, but it there's a lot of stuff that is, that's a specific struct. We'd like to make it a trait in Rust, um, which is like kind of like an interface in, say, Java. Um, and then we could have multiple implementations of that thing. And it would be a little simpler um, to move forward to having different kinds of individuals that might be, include programs or other things instead of just vectors of Booleans. So that's what we're working on, short version. I don't know if that made sense or that helped. Um, I'm certainly more than happy to take questions if you've got questions um, uh, and suggestions and other cool things. So uh, we had just um, gotten our selector. So we had this new, the old selector trait. We created this new selector trait that's generic in just one type instead of generic in two types. Um, and now we're looking to get rid of all references to this old one um, so that we can ultimately make it go away. And there are three references here in the generation module. Um, so there's this one and 
this one and this one. And I'm hoping that I can just get lucky and say um, something like EC individual here and EC individual here. Whoops, I oh, can't spell. Um, and then all of that goes away and this still compiles. It looks like it. Well, that's cool. Run, run, yeah, look at that. So, there's now no reference to this guy outside of this module. Final references. Yeah. So we can actually just get rid of that. Slick. And then we can rename. So I think we can just do that. Boom. Okay. Let's be paranoid. Yeah. And then we can rename this rename symbol to just be selector. And be paranoid again. And it works. Yay! And then commit. Because that was an important change. So that replaced. Oh, yeah, I probably should have done that in two commits, actually. Um, uh, and remove the import. Yes. Bingo. Good catch. Should have been paying attention to Clippy. Clippy was trying to help me there. Okay. So, um, really should have done that in two steps, but we will muddle through. Um, actually, on stage, let's do generation first. Except we can't really, because uh, I've changed the name already. But let's just do that. Um, way. It turns out that the only references to selector gr were in generation and they were very easy to swap out. Um, yeah. And in fact, Izitsu, I think, uh, does something similar with at least cargo format. I don't know about cargo Clippy. And I should do that, actually. Um, uh, in fact, I'm going to add that to a to-do list here. Um, add get commit pre-commit hooks for Clippy and foomt. Um because I more than once have committed stuff that Clippy had simple suggestions about that I should have dealt with. Um, and I only discovered cargo format part... Yeah, absolutely. Um, that'd be great. Or a pointer to it. Um, that'd be awesome. Um, I only discovered format, weirdly, just like in the last few weeks. I mean, I know I'd seen it early when I was first like learning Rust back in May and June, 
um, but it didn't sort of register. And then I sort of came back to it um, uh, a week or so ago. I was like, oh, I really should be using Format. Um, but I haven't sort of integrated it in, into my tool chain yet. So I should totally do that. And anything you can share, totally appreciate it. Um, so we'll have that. And then all of these are just renaming, right? Uh, yeah. And eliminating. Just a bunch of instances. Okay. Rename, oh, selector I to selector. Now that all references to the old selector GR are gone, we can remove that and rename selector I to selector. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. The rusty hook crate with cargo make. Um, hmm. I'll make a note of that. Um, uh, is it to uses the rusty hook crate with cargo make? Although that hasn't been updated in a while. So I guess a question is whether it needs to be updated. Like some things, once they work, you can kind of leave them alone. Other things need to be kept up to date because the space they're in keeps moving, even if the logic of the thing itself is pretty stable. And I'd have to do a little reading to figure out kind of where that sits. Um, but I'll look into it. So that's cool to know. Um, awesome. So now I think that takes care of all the selectory stuff. I'm going to actually close everybody but generation. Um, so we know we've got a reference to EC individual here and here. Um, question is, are there others? Uh, find all references. Uh, so they're in the benchmarking stuff. Um, we know they're in here. That's no surprise. They're in lib. They're in bit string. They're in population. Well, that's in the tests. Okay. And they're okay in the tests. We're fine with that because you got to have a concrete individual to be able to um, uh, do tests. So Izitsu's suggestion is to do child maker. Um, so essentially we'd have the same thing right now. We're taking two types and we want to turn that into taking a single type um, of a single generic, which is going to be the individual type. <coughs> uh, in the same way that VecPop and Selector do. Okay, I buy that. And I think that Childmaker really ought to be in its own um, module and not floating around here in generation. I think that is just not smart um now the question is is there a place that it belongs i don't think so i think it should just be its own thing now so a question for those of you who are more rust experienced than me um which is a lot of the universe um does it make sense to immediately use the folder approach when making a module? Is that just kind of what you naturally do? Oh, thank you. Let me grab that so I don't lose it. Um, 
Um, uh, glad Rios shared their uh, pre-commit. Boom. Um, do you just sort of automatically make the folder version of things or would you look at something small like this and be like, oh, I'll just make a childmaker.rs and not bother with the folder business? I don't have a very good sense of, like, is it just best practice to always make the folder because you might need it later? Um, and I could certainly imagine in this case there being multiple implementations of Childmaker, although they're probably going to be type specific. So they're probably going to be like in bitstring or in push GP. So there may not be much in in sort of the initial child maker space. Um, so I don't know if, if anybody's got thoughts on that. Um, it's not obvious to me um, from what I've read um, and from my experience kind of when you would decide to make a folder and when you wouldn't. So start with a single file and then make a folder if there seem to be other multiple files that come from that, I suspect. <coughs> like in selectors where there was clearly lots of different selectors, it sort of made sense to split that out. So, okay, then let's do that. Um, so I want... So, oh, actually, no, I don't want to do that. One thing I think I've begun to slowly figure out is I think it makes more sense to be as top down as possible um, in these things. And then Rust Analyzer can help me out more. Um, and I don't have to do as much. Um, Yeah, well, so you, you both seem to agree, so that's cool to not, to see. So that makes me happy. Um, and then I'm going to move this guy wah, 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 into here. Now there's going to need to be a whole pile of imports. Uh, yep, grab that. And we're going to need generation. Grab that. We're going to need EC individual. Oh, come on. Grab that. Okay. And now generation is going to be broken because it's not going to know where Childmaker went. So I need to tell it that. And lib is broken for the same reason. Uh, oh, it's just not. Yeah. Uh, use child maker, child maker, boom, bop. Um, current recommendation is not to use mod.rs and call it whatever.rs. Then if you need child modules, you can put them in the whatever folder and reference them from that file. Um, oh, so you would actually have, so instead of mod.rs here, there would be a selector.rs outside of that folder. Um, and then you wouldn't have mod.rs in here. Well, that's interesting. Because I do find mod.rs is sort of a weird thing here. Like, when this gets long, finding it, I mean, it's in alphabetical order, so it's not impossible, but it doesn't sort of stand out. It's not like at the beginning or the end where you kind of might expect it to be. Um, and you're searching for mod, which is kind of weird and generic. 
Whereas if selector was out here, uh, then that might be, it would be right next to the folder. Um, and that actually would be probably easier. So I kind of like that better. Huh. I might come back and make that change. Um, let's finish the child maker thing, but I think that might be an interesting thing. Um, so make a note, selectors mod.rs to selectors.rs, boom. Come on, out you go, there we go. Yeah, that actually makes sense to me. Um, oh, you're right, I hadn't thought about that. Folders are shorted on top, so selector isn't gonna be next to selector.rs. Hmm. I suspect that's a changeable thing in VS Code, um, but yeah, like I said, we'll worry about that uh, later. We're not going to chase that right now. Okay, so we have pub trait child maker, and actually we're going to follow pretty much the same deal I think we did on oh, which is out mostly gone because um, we deleted it all. But the same deal we did, did on selectors. So if we do pub, tray, child, maker, I, I, uh, make child self, mute, thread, generation, generation gr ooh so that can't be gr anymore oh, that's interesting hmm so so there's actually kind of a, a circularity here Population didn't refer to generation and selector didn't refer to generations. We didn't run into a problem. But here, because childmaker refers to a generation, if childmaker just has I, we're going to have to have the version of generation that just has I as well. Uh, or... Can we um, hmm. Can we, does oh, that's a good question. Does it? actually need the gen full generation no probably not what it probably needs is the population that's inside the generation um, let's look at our we only have one implementation of child maker at the moment which is the two point crossover mutate child maker terrible name and it implements child maker and it oh it calls get parent oh the generation has the selectors so we're calling so we're hiding the fact that the generation has the population and just having it access that through the get parent method which calls the um, selector. So maybe all we need here, let's see, let's find our get parent. So our get parent just calls the select method on the selector. So if we, 
exposed. Hmm. So we could either just ex have a get method on the selector and have child maker just get handed the selector and not the whole generation or we could have a new uh, actually can there's really no reason we couldn't have generation implement selector and have a select method. Is that true? Um, so a selector, oh no, a selector takes a population. We wouldn't want the generation to take a population. So it doesn't make sense for generation to implement selector. Um, but we could just expose, return the selector um, have a, a get method that returns the selector and have um, child maker only depend on the selector instead of depending on the whole um, generation. So that actually might make sense and break that circularity. So I'm going to actually comment you at, oh, what undo what I do. That was weird. Um, wrong key. Oh, that, good grief. There we go. So put that back. And now let's go deal with this. Oh, I guess we didn't deal with this. So this is now going to take a selector. Um, And a selector takes a type I, which is just going to be an EC individual GR at the moment. And that's going to be all grumpy because we need um, is this actually a dying thing or is this one something else? Okay, that was actually a dying thing. Um, but what is that? That broke some stuff. Now, what breaks here? Right there. So that isn't self. That should be self.selector. Okay, and that should be self.selector. Cool. And then, oh, I see what you're saying. You know, you're probably right. You're completely right. Ah, poop. Let's undo. Um, what did I just change? Anything? I don't know. Let's uh, go back here and undo ourselves out of this. Okay, I think that then leaves that alone. Child maker, we want to undo. Yeah. So that's right. And then this, what did I break? I broke something down here. No? Yes? Maybe? What? What is broken down? Oh, generation is still broken. Why is generation broken? Um, oh, I must have removed one too many things. Still need my import. Okay. So yes, I think you're completely right. I should have not 
tried to do too much at once. So then this will actually take a selector And then we have I anyway, so we should be good. Bob. Okay. Awesome. And now we need to import selector. Yeah. And why are we grumpy? Oh, because we do need the dime. Okay. So, uh, so now that exists. And so then the trick is to, again, try to make this refer to that so that we can get rid of this. Um, and hopefully do some of the same tricks that we did on selector. So we want, I'm going to copy, I'm going to comment out, oops, undo. So I'm going to say this implements child maker I uh, EC individual GR. Um, and then that in theory shouldn't need anything. Child maker works better if you have, oh, can spell. And we're not happy. Why are we not happy? Cycle detected. So child, oh, because I didn't say I. Works better if you do that. Okay. Then we want the nifty thing that you suggested. Impl gr oh, it was for, uh, t child maker for T where T implements child maker I I no EC individual GR So we implement child, if we have already implemented child maker I, then we can implement, so we need TGR, we can implement child maker GR. And in close angle. So if we've already implemented this for an EC individual, then we've implemented this as well. And the same, oh, but the same make child won't work. We're gonna have to call. Yeah, because everybody's expecting this guy. So we actually really need that. Um, if we want to minimize the amount of re, uh, whoops, yeah. the changing we have to do. Uh, so that should cause this to fail. Because we don't have, why does that not fail? Because we're saying we're implementing this trait and we do not have this make child method. 
and things do not line up. Why does that not blow up? Is it being hidden by this compiler error down here? Uh, oh, because I haven't implemented two point crossover does not implement child maker I. So we don't run into that issue yet. Uh, for two point. And then I'm going to need to have R is my only generic at the moment. Oh, except this needs that guy. So this is going to need that guy. Maybe. And then the mate child is going to have to be in here. Wah, wah, wah. And then in theory, eventually this other one goes away. So this does not take a generation. It takes a selector. Let's kind of get away with just that. Need to import. And then this would be selector dot select. Selector dot select. And why are we grumpy? Oh, got to import it. And we're not happy about my underscore. Oh, maybe we are. Maybe. Dine. Nope, we're not happy about my underscore. Okay, so selector. You see individual bit string test results are. Okay, so that works. And now uh, we probably don't have the right thing implemented. Two conflicting implementations. Yeah, so we have two things with the same name. So that's, I'm, I am confused as to why this doesn't fuss about this. Feels like Childmaker Implementing child maker I should just be all shouty, given that they have two different definitions. Um, so presu presumably this, I mean, hello, the composite gen. Um, so remove this. Oh, and lib. So just remove this guy you're suggesting. And so, oh, what is grumpy here?
Oh, it can't be self. It needs to be self.selector. Um, so, uh, should get the errors if you add the other child maker. So, hang, hold that question, composite gen. I, I, I have a small brain and I'm going to lose track of where I am. So, you're suggesting put this one back, I think. Um, and now this is saying we're grumpy because we don't have we don't have the missing item and but how why don't these two types or these two definitions just get all on top of each other I'm quite confused about why that's even possible um you're talking about here called child maker so t make child self mm, and let's see we we received a generation right uh so self dot selector can't type um, oh, I still can't type. Good grief. T. Oh, we, we, we just re received a selector. What am I doing? So T. Oh, no, it, it really is a generation. So the name's bad there. Why are we not having access to it? Oh, it's private. Hmm. Probably just simplest thing is to make it available uh, impulse a g r generation a g r uh, fun pub fun selector Turns a dime selector EC individual GR and oh, self dot selector. Oh, and this should be reference to self. Da, 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 Okay. And now we blew up something else somewhere. Back over here. So now that works. Um Yeah. So let me answer composite gen's question quick and then we'll um, see if we can get the rest of this to work. So um, I'm implementing a evolution computation system in Rust. It started off as basically a simple genetic algorithm that just evolved fit, fixed length bet strings. Um, my goal is to move to a more generalized system that can do that, plus genetic programming, evolving computer programs, and some other things. So we're currently in the process of trying to generalize um, a lot of the existing <coughs> GA-specific code, and in particular, taking a bunch of structs and turning them into traits um, so that we can have multiple implementations of those traits downstream. And I'm trying to do this in a reasonably incremental way. Um, the first thing, first time we tried doing some of this, we just started changing things all over the place and it really got out of control for my small brain. Um, 
And so I'm trying to do it in a more incremental way. So we're doing things like, you know, there was the old trait and now there's a new trait um, that, so the old trait had two generics and the new trait just has a single generic. And then I'm trying to incrementally move the world to use the new trait instead of the old trait. Um, so we've got this thing that where we say anything that implements the new trait also implements the old trait. So code that was using the old trait can continue to do so um, uh, until we've got everybody like working and then we can go through and try to remove any references to the old trait um, uh, until eventually all of this stuff will go away and we'll just have this left. But this scaffolding sort of keeps the old code working um, while we're toddling along. And so we've got that far. Now generation isn't happy because, um, yeah. So this is, now we've run into the problem where these two have the same name. So this really is going to have to have a different name so that um, I don't have this problem of these two things smashing into each other. And existing code is going to expect this name. So I'm going to, you know, in keeping with adding dumb letters to um, uh, uh, oh, I hadn't thought about explicitly calling it. But yeah, the uh, I think in keeping with the sort of adding dumb letters per, part of the program, um, I'm just going to change this to be um, make child underscore I. And um, then we'll obviously fix that dumb name um, later. Now these two things have different names, which will hopefully make stuff less bad. That fix that problem. Um, so, I mean, I, the goal will be to get rid of these. So, um, I think we won't need. I think I see what you're saying, and I think I see what you're saying. Um, and and that could be a concern if I thought this was going to stick around, but. I think the goal is that these will just go away once we've gotten rid of all the references to the old child maker. And then we'll just have the new child maker I, which won't be tied to EC individual anymore. So fingers crossed, that'll be okay in the end. Um, now, why are you fussy? Um, uh, dying child maker gr cannot show. Oh yeah, so we need sync, and I think that used to be, yeah. So child maker sync was a thing, and so that still needs to be a thing. And that also, oh, that yeah, stop it. It also means that we're probably going to need this to be sync as well. So T needs to be sync. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That makes sense. And so downstream, child maker's probably going to need to be sync, but nobody seems to notice or care yet. So zippity doo -dah. Um. So then... Uh, oh yeah, we can pass the population and we don't have it. Oh, poop. Right, because the generation encapsulated the population and the selector so get parent had access to both of them. And now we don't have that property anymore. That's awkward and blows up the idea of just having a child maker take a selector because a selector has to have 
a population to act on and Childmaker doesn't get handed a population by default, it could get handed one. Yeah, so we could add another argument here. Population vec pop I uh, I'm not profoundly jazzed about that, but um, it will, I think, work. Uh, quick fix import. Um, um, oh, go. Stop. What are you doing? Stop. There we are. Um, so now, this is going to need to take a population, uh, and I just said it was, oops, over here, it's just a type vec pop. So we can say vec pop uh, ec individual bit string test results are boom, 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 boom. And then this will need to have population passed in. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Population passed in. It was nice seeing you. Thanks for being here. Um, why are the two called? Arguments are incorrect. Oh, it's a reference to that. In fact, this probably ought to be a reference here which means this probably ought to be a reference here because we don't want to take ownership of the population. Um, and that then needs to be that. And why are we grumpy? Expected mute thread RNG found. Oh. I somehow, what? Oh, I get the arguments in the wrong order. Well, that was silly. There we go. Cool. Um, and then, why are we grumpy here? Self. So R needs to implement some, which it did down here. And R needs to implement copy. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to implement a bunch of stuff. So let's R sum plus copy. Let's get rid of this, boom. Um, and R is gonna need to implement from 64. Presumably it's going to be all of these things, but no, maybe not all of them because it didn't turn out that we needed ORD here. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Well, there we go. So everything compiles. Uh, that looks like it. Does it run? 
hey, we evolved all zeros again. So this is a simple test problem where the target is all zeros. And we start out with, um, let's see if we back up. Oh, run it again. We start off with random strings of zeros and ones. And over time, we get more and more zeros until ultimately we get all zeros. Yeah, so here we're at all zeros. So it works, yay! Um, and so then this just disappears. And this implementation of Childmaker really belongs somewhere else. I'm gonna not sweat that right this minute, but that's a thing that ought to be moved. And so now I think I wanna commit and, oh, hey, we've got uh, some, uh, clippy fuss that we need to deal with. Um, that is, the, I'm just going to leave there because that's kind of there for a reason. Um, and then child maker, uh, line 14. It says I don't need the ampersand there. Um, and line 18 doesn't like the fact that this starts with the name child maker. I'm not going to worry about that because that's going to just go get going to get renamed in a second. Anyway, um, generation 27, this we can add the must use annotation and that makes all the clippy warnings happy um and so let's commit what we've got here so we move child maker out and we added a child maker i and um, so here we had to add, I'm going to actually add that as a separate commit. Um, uh, generation selector, uh, And then that's the trait, and this is getting that implementation of Child Maker to match the new universe. Okay, so I think I'll do all of that once. So Um, maker I, I trait that is only generic in a single type instead of the GR pair for the old child maker trait um, uh, we then oh yeah um,
Oh, and we moved. We also moved this to its own module file. And that's really what's happening in generation there. And then lib, we just had to update. Uh, two point x o mutation child maker to match these changes. And I should say something. Should I say something about? Yeah, I probably should say um, to remove a circular. Well, it truly is a circular reference between generation and um, child maker. The new interface, see the make child I method in the new interface, interface. Um, takes the population and the selector selector from the generation instead of taking the generation directly. Hmm. I'm thinking because I, um, it seems awkward that we're passing two of the three components of a generation to Childmaker. Um, and so I was thinking, would, is there a sort of a way of reversing it where instead of passing generation to child maker, we could pass child maker to generation and it could do something, but then we get some kind of double dispatch and that doesn't seem great. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll let it go. I feel like maybe there's just another interface somewhere that ought to happen and that Childmaker won't wouldn't take a generation directly, but would take some interface that generation implements. Uh, and then we could call get parent on that interface. Uh, I'll make a note. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this. Um, uh, child maker. Instead of passing two thirds of generation to this function, is there a trait? we can have generation implement and pass in a reference to something implementing that trait instead. Um, the trait would presumably implement the get parent method or similar. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let that roll. Um, now let's remove this because I don't think anybody needs this anymore. Right? Uh, references who refers to that? Um, Generation refers to it.
So it imports it and it's here and it's here. And so I think I could just replace those with references to Childmaker I and then hopefully get rid of Oops. Uh, the EC individual GR and oops, I don't want to get rid of that. EC individual GR. And something isn't happy. What isn't happy? Right here. So if we're changing from GR, then we want to have the arguments are the range, the population, and the selector. And oh, it's make child I, so we'll have to change that name later. And this is going to need to be a reference. And that's good, but this isn't. Oh, are we going to have a, um, uh, a send? No. What? Oh, this only, this expects a function of, well, no, actually, hang on. So why are we grumpy here? Aha, it is a sync thing. So Childmaker has to implement sync. Uh, and send. So I need, um, where is Childmaker coming from? So that means in, this has to be plus sync and send. Ah, I think. No, that did not make the world happy. Ambiguous plus. Oh, so we need. says we want this. Oh, okay. Um, but something else isn't happy in this file. So here we don't know that that is sync and send. So it needs to be, so that's got to also be sync and send. And somewhere lib's going to blow up because it doesn't know that the two crossover yada wada thing that we built is sync and send. Uh, no. Oh, so we need child maker needs to know that that's a sync and send thing. Because, yeah, that whole thing doesn't necessarily have a make child. Um, oh, no, actually, I wanted make child I anyway, right? 
and then this is going to need to be self.population and self.selector and a reference to here. Okay. Generation now compiles. Zippity doo dah. Um, now run again. Oh, we're just about out of time. That works good. Now I think there is no, there are no references. Hello. Yeah, I don't think there's any references to Childmaker anymore. That's cool. So if we comment this out, it compiles. And it still runs. Hey, look at that. And then let's commit. So this we just replaced all the references to Childmaker. And then in the next commit, we'll rename everything to be something sensible again. Um, so placed all uses of child maker with child maker i this replaced well i think that's kind of obvious um and it was just some fairly straightforward changes in generation yeah commit now we want to change the name because the names are bad. Rename symbol, make child, and rename symbol. Boom. And we get rid of a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, Voila, that's pretty nifty. We make sure it works again. And we commit that. So that was just renaming child maker and make child. And then that affected a bunch of other stuff. Ba -ba -ba. Rename make child I to Oh, child maker, actually. Child maker I to child maker. We also renamed child maker I make child I to make child. Boom. Voila. So at this point, we have, go back to generation. Um, so generation refers to EC individual, but we have an, a population trait we can put here. We have a selector trait. We have a child maker trait, so we ought to be able to get rid of the EC individual here uh, and hopefully make this a single I instead of a G and an R. That would be the next step, I think. But it's 12 o'clock, so I say we're done. Thank you all very much. That was super cool, and I think a lot of good stuff happened and I particularly am fond of which is gone now but that trick of implementing um, 
the new trait for type T that implemented the old trait. No, implementing the old trait for type T that implements the new trait. That was very nifty. I think that was the cool like learning moment of the um, session today. Um, so thank you. You're all awesome human beings. Um, I will be back uh, on tomorrow night. On tomorrow night. I'll be back tomorrow night um, uh, from 7 to 9. Um, and I think maybe we might be able to finish dealing with this. Let's see. If I say EC individual, where are there... So the benchmarks we don't care about bit string that's all in tests um, generation there's stuff to be done lib there's stuff to be done population i think it's all just in tests um yeah i think that's all in tests main i think that's in tests an individual well, there's the implementation of EC individual. So I think generation and lib are the only places where there's interesting uses of um, uh, uh, interesting uses of EC individual. Um, and then, yeah, so population. Wah, wah, wah. So we want to get population to be a trait eventually as well. Um, and I don't know. I feel like we're kind of close on the EC individual thing. Uh... And then we could come back and deal with population um, as a trait um, once we get the EC individual thing taken care of. Um, uh, yeah. Kind of six of one way, six of one, half a dozen the other is the order, but um, I kind of like my head's focused on the EC individual thing right now. So it'd be kind of nice to, I think, finish that up. Um, I think one thing I still don't have a very good sense of um, is from a practical standpoint, whether it's better if you've got a, a, a chain of dependency, so A depends on B, depends on C, and you want to, and they're all say structs, and you want to turn them all into traits, like what's the better order? Do you start at the top? Do you start at the bottom? Um, and I'm not sure this experience has really clarified that for me, but this is also kind of cluttered. Um, and so um, I might actually play with a simpler example offline to sort of get a sense of whether I feel like it makes more sense to go top down or bottom up, which way gives you the... Um, the better support from the type system, I guess. So, but that's not today's problem. Um, so cool. I think we, we did get useful stuff done. Uh, and then we'll, we can pick this up tomorrow night, seven to nine. So that's Wednesday, seven to nine PM CST. I uh, cannot touch type. Um, and then I'll also be back Saturday, um, 10 to noon and 2 to 4 CST um, working on trying to get this done because that'll be cool. So thank you all very much. It was a pleasure. I'm going to go off now and do some other things and I will talk to you later. Goodbye! <laughs>